Hi, this is a tutorial on the joys of backyard electro engraving. Let's wander back to the studio. This is an example of what we're going to be engraving. These happen to be the signature slash logos I use on some art. These are in steel, but you can use this process on other metals. First step is clean the metal. This is again steel. You want to use anything that can degrease it. Soapy water in this case works just fine. I'll often use a little bit of phosphoric acid. You can delete the phosphoric acid with water. This is now preparing the metal for the etching. You need to use something. It could be a piece of tape that you've cut your design into, or in my case, vinyl. And this is just to increase the resistance have the electricity at that point so that only the metal is going to conduct the electricity and that's the area that's going to become engraved. What I use for these and what I found works really well is an old train sets transformer. These are DC and AC. Um, we use the DC for this first process of etching the metal. The AC I'll show you later can be used to mark the metal. You can also use any other power source. You can use a 9-volt battery. You can use those small wall wart type uh, transformers that you can use to power small electrical devices. Um, there's nothing fancy about the train transformer. It's just something I've found was readily available and can be switched, as I'm showing here, to give more or less current. Um, you want to find your positive and negative leads and make sure that you have them properly marked. Um, and those need to be properly applied to the metal, as I'll show um, in a minute. So here I was just determining which was positive, which was negative. In this case, white is positive and black is negative. What you need to do then is connect the positive pole to the art piece or your knife or whatever it is that you are going to be um, engraving. The negative is going to go to the tool or the piece of metal that's going to be drawing metal off of your art. So here you see the positive lead is connected to the corner of the art. Then you mix up some water and some salt and a little bit of vinegar. The proportions don't really matter, just make it salty water. I'm now applying a small amount of that electrolyte solution to the art, and I'm just making sure that it's all reaching the metal that I want to engrave. Again, this is just salt water with a tiny bit of vinegar in it. Positive lead is connected to the art. Now, the negative is connected to this, a similar piece of metal, in this case steel, and is attached or just held or touched over the art piece. And I'm holding it down with another piece of steel here. I'm about to turn the power on. And at that point, you should be timing this. This could take anywhere from five seconds to several minutes not usually more than about three to five minutes though and it's okay during this period to be checking it every once in a while I've done this enum enough times that I know that it's this this actually requires for this system about two minutes usually so at this point the electricity is flowing through it's removing the electricity from the positive uh, piece of art the positively connected piece of art and it's drawing that metal back onto the to the piece of metal that is connected to the negative leads. In this case, I have a small piece of paper towel right where the negative lead is connected to the tool metal, and that's because I needed to increase the resistance within this circuit. Um, there's other ways to have done that, but this was a cheap and easy way to make that happen. You don't want, if I was going to touch the negative and the positive leads together, I would obviously short circuit the system. Um, so I needed to build in a little bit of resistance to avoid that from happening. So you want to check your power source. If it feels like it's getting hot, you need to add more resistance in there. It could be a piece of paper towel, anything to just sort of add more resistance. 
after about two minutes in this with this system I'm going to remove the piece of metal and have a look and see what it looks like so in this case there's very little happening and I determined that I had too much resistance so I'm unfolding the paper towel a little bit and reconnecting it there just wasn't enough electricity flowing for it to do the work I need I'm adding a little more electrolyte and in that case adding even less resistance by wetting that so as you can see there's no problem with um, checking this as the process is going on you want to be really careful here that the way I laid that metal on top there I could have easily short-circuited between the positive and the negative you don't want those two um, connections to to come in contact with one another directly the only contact is sort of through the art piece or the knife or whatever it is you're engraving So I'm going to check it and see if any progress. And this time you can see that metal is in fact being removed from the art piece. Okay, it's run a few more seconds, maybe 20 seconds. I'm going to take another look at it. That looks great. I mean, that's a deep etch. Normally I'd wear gloves. This is just, uh, you're not going to get shocked or, by any means, but this is just dries your hands out if you do this too much. So it's also good when you're checking this to wipe off the, any particles of metal that have already been etched out of it. Just that way the electricity seems as though it can get down to the bare metal and continue the etching process. Looks like I decided to give it even a little bit more, so I added some more electrolyte. Back down goes the negative, and the etching continues. So when you've determined that the etching is as deep as you'd like it, turn everything off. Here's the piece that I was just working on. I'm going to clean it up, take another look at it. Looks good. So I'm going to remove the mask and see what we've got. It's pretty deep. This etch was probably deeper than it should have been. It's likely going to be pretty rough. But depending on what you're doing, that may be the effect you're going for. And I definitely recommend you do a few of these as test etches just to see you know, whether this is something that's going to require five seconds of etching or if you're going to be more in the area of several minutes. So as I said, this, uh, it was much deeper and sort of a sloppy etch. But it was the first one and we were just getting used to the new setup. And if that's cleaned up, um, it'll look pretty uniform and definitely something I would use. Here it is cleaned up. Okay, I'm now going to show after you DC etch it how you can use AC to mark the metal. First, I'll do just as before. This is a DC etching. Checking it as I go along, clean it up, sometimes add a little more saline solution or um, electrolyte and replace the tool and let it keep going. This is just the DC, DC aspect of this process, which etches the metal. The entire process from when I started this etching is about two minutes and I'll speed it up. Uh,
Okay, now that we've got the metal etched, I'm going to show the AC marking. We switch everything over to AC, but the rest of it remains the same. Positive still goes to the art, or whatever you want to etch. And the negative is going to go to the piece of metal that is doing the etching. So just as before, we um, add the electrolyte, which is the salt water and vinegar solution. Add the piece of metal, and now this metal will be depositing or corroding the piece of art below it. And this is a permanent mark. It can't be easily removed without grinding. It's really the exact same process, but now you're using AC. And it doesn't take as long. I find it takes about 50% as long as the etching took. But that's a very rough guide, and this is steel with steel. And just as before, um, while you're marking this, it's perfectly fine to take a look as you go along to see what sort of progress has been made. Just remember that now you're going to be depositing or corroding the base metal. And you can also additionally add um, more electrolyte as needed during this process. So here I am checking to see is it darkening up. And this dark won't wipe off nearly as easy as the etched markings would. It won't rub off at all once it's done. At this point, um, you're just checking to see how what's covered and what's not covered. You can see the top area is still not marked. So I can reposition the base, the tool metal, to cover just that area so that I don't overmark the portion towards the bottom. Okay, this has been marking that top area just to get that part that seemed to have been missed earlier. Take a look. And that's good coverage. I mean, it's uniformly dark. I give it a little wipe off. You can see that still along the top there wasn't the best of connections. Um, so it's not quite as marked as I would like it to be at the very top where I'm pointing. It's still quite light. Um, but I decided to take a look and see. And as you can see, it's pretty dark. So that's etched and dark. The tape marks will come off with just a little bit of solvent or even just hard rubbing with a paper towel. So that is DC etched with an AC mark. Here are some of the pieces I did that day. This was the first piece. The etching was deeper and rougher than you would normally want. It was, it was pretty crude, but I actually like that look. And as you'll see, there's just different depths, different cleanness. All of these were changed or made primarily just by varying how long I was etching. The one on the very right was the one that was marked. 